All right, we're live on Facebook. Good evening, guys. Good evening, Greg, How are you Rich. Guys? Good evening. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, well, you know, uh, busy doing things. Some very interesting works and you know things happening in uh, the uh, wine world in my life. Uh, there's a guinea, a little shameless plug. There's guinea fest happening in uh, Castaways in uh, Burbank, and a lot of Armenians are going to be gathering there. Cotting wine will be represented there. I hope. <laughs> so, so, One way I, hope I hope so too, man. I think it's great, dude. Yeah. Like, uh, lots to consider, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening with breakthrough cases and a lot of, uh, I really, really, they, and the organizers do all they can for, for an amazing, amazing uh, event. And it's something that we've been waiting for for two years now because last year's was canceled and it right. went virtual. So anyways, a little plug from me. If you're out there, see you there. Um, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, but otherwise yeah let's uh, i'm good lots of good things happening i've been finding myself in the sierra foothills recently Maybe we keep missing each other somehow i don't understand how but there it is uh, but outside of that obviously you know like i've been telling you guys a little bit re-traumatized by everything that goes on constantly and not constantly and you know those yeah. folks that always say hey our Arash media why are you guys so negative well you know <laughs> things aren't that great well, yeah it, it's hard when the news is coming out isn't yeah. largely positive i mean yeah. sure there there are positive things happening in the armenian diaspora even in armenia i'm sure there are but it's just the main news that's coming out tends to be uh rather concerning in a lot of ways which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. Um, we have obviously the three of us. We have a lot to cover tonight, um, and we're going to try and you know keep it to an hour or so because we have to. You know, we all have lives too, just just like you do. Um, so obviously, the big news for tonight: uh, we've got some more aggression that uh, the Azer the Azerbaijan has been you know wielding against the Armenians. We knew that something was coming. Uh, I don't think this is the end of it. I think this is just um, we're beginning to scratch the surface. So, so we've got we've got some new attacks. We've got in a couple provinces. Uh, we also have news coming out of uh, the defense ministry. Uh, we've got more news on the POWs. Uh, we've got some election coverage uh, and more. And we have a lot of news coming out of the United States. Uh, but I want everybody to pay attention to the. Uh, close to the end, we're going to unpack um, some really important news that that's coming out of the United States in terms of, um, well, Greg will be able to explain a little bit more, but I really encourage you to stay tuned until the end because there's a lot to talk about there. Uh, and it's a, a, a program called TARC and um, a, it, committee. It, a, com a committee, yeah. a committee, a yeah. committee. And, and, and it will essentially show you a little bit about the mindset about what is going on and how the how these decisions are being made. Uh, and which will tee us up to the end, where we show you a little bit about how to work with your representatives, or at least we're going to give you a call to action, because we do have the luxury of being in the United States where we can talk to our representatives, and we need to pull those levers as often as we can, uh, or else we won't have the opportunity anymore. So um, why don't we just get right into it, guys? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Rich. Um, obviously, we'll start off with the, you know, the, the most pressing news, right? Uh, we saw a, to a total all-out uh, aggression on all fronts around Armenia, particularly from the eastern border, as David would mention, that this is, you know, we see a lot of issues, obviously, uh, uh, piling up on the, uh, sorry, western border, I apologize, on the eastern border in Tavush, uh, actually July right now, guys, let's, let's make a mention. It's a year anniversary of the uh, insane skirmishes that we thought were the largest uh, accelerator of, uh, what do you call it, firepower exchange between the two countries until unfortunately the 44 day war. Um, so most of the things that we always typically see are on the Eastern border, now in Artsakh, Sunik, uh, Gerhard Kunik, as we're seeing that happening again. But now that there's, there's an, an intensified skirmish coming in from the Nakhichevan side, uh, down towards the Ararat Valley, which is mere 45 miles or so away from uh, Yerevan, you know, this is really, really, I don't want to call it really close to comfort because any piece of Armenian territory is close to comfort, but like this particular, it's in the town of Yerashk, which is, uh, you know, if you're ever going to Noravank, uh, as David and I have gone, um, it's literally where you're going down the Ararat Valley and then you kind of 
you need to make a turn. In the Soviet days, that would, road would continue on through and you'd be entering, you know, Anakhichevan, which is in Azerbaijan. So that town got intense, intense shelling uh, a few days ago that, uh, you know, even, uh, what do you call it, um, resulted in the mayor of the town uh, being uh, hospitalized for gunshot wounds, as well as uh, we uh, saw a lot of, um, what do you call it, um, firepower that is not just skirmishes. You know, when skirmishes usually are taught to us, it's sometimes, you know, sniper fire, gunshot fire. No, these are like large caliber rounds escalating towards mortars. Um, right. Hey, Greg, before we get into some some, some of that, let's, I'm, I just pulled up a, a map so we can sort of point everybody at what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let's do this. So, so, yeah, here we go. All right. So if we, um, if we go towards, yeah, you see like that little dot in, in, in Armenia right there inside of Armenia. So that's Nakhichevan, right? So again, Artsakh on the other side, um, Sunik down below, and this is Nakhichevan, right? Um, and then if we go into the corner of where it says Sadarak, right in the corner of Nakhichevan, up top, up top, and zoom in on there, further up, yeah, if, yeah. and if we zoom in, this is in, right across the border is the town of Yerashk, right, right there, across the border of Nakhichevan. Yeah, you can actually see it, if you zoom in close enough, yeah, there, there it is, Yerashk. Right there, right there. and this is, this is where it's going. Now the theory here is this, Richard extend your line to the right of a town of Tigranashen, which has a little enclave. No, up to the right. Yeah, up top. Um, Tigranashen, right right up that road from Yerash. Uh, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. Yeah, right, yeah, right there. Yeah. Boom. This is a territory that is being claimed by Azerbaijan as an enclave within Armenia. And they say all of the fighting is actually happening as a way to test the forces and go towards that area. Because nowhere in the 30 years of, this, of the post-Soviet Armenia has there ever been fighting, hard fighting, in that direction. Um, this, again, is obviously of this amazingly horrendous uh, November 9th agreements, these enclaves that nobody talked about in the back end, and I mean, we can get off the map at this point. Um, we, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we uh, never mentioned that these enclaves are going to become a problem. There's one in Tabush, there's one here. Um, and these, and, and so, but bottom line is this, we got, we got fighting there. Um, it seems to have subsided now. That's it's number worth, one. I was going to say, it's worth noting that this town if it's being claimed by Azerbaijan, it has an Armenian name. Well, you know, they also have double, double names for everything. So, and yes, you're right. right. Um, but they also has, the Azeris obviously placed the name, which is something David actually pointed out, where the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Pashinyan, I think, mentioned that if, if Aliyev keeps making claim to everything in, uh, in, in Armenia, it's essentially inviting Armenians to essentially continue making claims to everything in Nakhichevan and uh, the adjoining areas in Azerbaijan. So it's a, uh, anyway, yes, which it's, used to be Armenian. It yeah, it's a messed up Armenian. thing. Yeah. Um, so look, guys, the biggest thing for me that stands out about this is, like you said at the top, Greg, the main concern has been on the eastern border, which now the full Armenian eastern border, almost the entire eastern border, borders Azerbaijan. Now this. This is an escalation that is now attacking on the southwestern border of Armenia with Nakhichevan. So there's video of it right there, the mortars and things being fired. Uh, and Greg, you coming through. No, these are, yeah, these are large caliber rounds that are being shot into the Armenian direction from mortar fire. Okay. Um, David, you were saying. Yeah, no, no, no. It, go ahead. Keep going. That's, that's exactly what we're seeing. So it, it's beyond concerning because at the same time, uh, while this is happening, the defense minister resigned. Mm -hmm. uh, you is, know, the, yeah, uh, Rich, thank you for showing. This is uh, the result of, uh, one, you know, if people say, well, you know, like, what, what's the result of this skirmish in the Yerash? Well, here we go. We got the, 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 the village mayor uh, wounded Injured. and in a, I believe in the town of Ararat, there's a regional hospital that where he was seeing, the, you know, getting treated. Um, but David, you, you mentioned about... Well, right. We're seeing this further acts of aggression, escalation of aggression from Azerbaijan. And then at the same time, two days ago, the Minister of Defense resigned. I mean, his Minister of Defense just resigned. Um, um, yeah. There was also, wasn't there news coming out that, that all, that all of the, the mayors of the, of the major cities in Sunni have, have been arrested? 
So yeah. not all, not all the, the mayors of certain re regions that were opposing the current administration, Bush and his administration, there have been more arrests made around that. So yes. I just want to, I just want to level set for, for a second. We have threats coming from both sides of this unique region. And now the mayors who stand to protect their cities have been arrested. Some of them, yes. Uh, David, yes. actually, I will corroborate. Weird. Well, Weird. I'll corroborate with Richard's statement. It's every mayor of every major town in Sunik. Because they were all in opposition of, of Bush and Mehri, Mehri, Agarak, Kafal, and uh, uh, Sisian. Uh, Goris, okay. So those those got it, you know, got it, I mean, got it. Can't can't get any more than that. I mean, anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but this is I think we've touched upon that uh, last time. So uh, the other thing to understand about these the levels of attacks now they are also being uh, uh, happening in Gerharkunik, which is exactly. lake, lake, by Lake Sevan, and they're also happening in regions around Sunik as well. So now you have uh, simultaneous skirmishes all over around Armenia. The only border that's secure-ish is the Georgian border, Iranian, and the Turkish-Armenian border, okay? So anything that Azerbaijan touches is now being contested. contested. Exactly. Um, there you go. So near the, this, the community of Ter, and then also, Richard, I have this pulled up, if I can show the screen, um, the, where in Gerhard Kunik, where there was a there was right here, real quick. Did you drop the link in here, or are we? Are, you go I'll, ahead. I'll pull, I'll put it. I'll pull it up real quick, and I'll. Yeah, continue. here we go. Um, so right here, um, you see where it is. So this is Vardenis. Remember, back in the day, we would talk about issues around here. So now that it's around this area, which is a town of Gera Mamas, right? And there's this high elevation. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe one of the links that I sent you was a Facebook message from the Azeris saying that they actually have an elevated ground taken in this area, which by the way, only has only a couple of kilometers between the border to uh, uh, Lake Sevan. Look, I mean, you can look right here. The legend here says two miles. This is two miles, you know what I mean? Right, right. It's, it's, it's nothing, guys. It's, it's, these are very volatile areas of Armenia and they're under constant threat. And, and Greg, highly populated, correct? Um, not Sevon. Lake Sevon area around Lake Sevon, yes, more to the north, but these areas mm -hmm. are not as popular. But there's regional centers there, yes. Sure, okay, yeah, yeah. My share. Um, so friends, good news. Let's try to bring good news, but I mean, there's concerning news all around that is really, really to the top of mind oh. because of everything that we've ever warned and we're worried about is now happening. And on the one hand, you got, again, um, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but you have the international community silent on this, but then whenever there's some kind of a PR statement of oh, Armenia needs to reconcile with Azerbaijan, Armenia needs to, you know, like territorial integrity of Azerbaijan, uh, Turkey and Armenia need to come together. Suddenly the Guardian picks it up, everybody else picks it up, but there's literal advancements onto the Armenian sovereignty and there, I don't see any uh, international coverage on that. Even no, of with course Canada, not. Even of with course Canada. not. Of course not. Yeah. Of course not. Um, right. Well, we, <laughs> it's in more than, well, here. Here's another territory. Right? Yeah. Yeah, there's Gehard. Yeah, Kut, uh, Kut Village was yeah. fired at as well. Mm -hmm. That's on, uh, that's the, near uh, Sevon, right, Craig? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so. Yeah. So this is the yeah. This is what was uh, sent to me by one of our friends. Uh, in, the, in Russian, uh, 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 on the bottom it says Geramamas, which is the town that I showed you with the with the Google pin on it, right? So literally, we're talking about this is like feet right here, right? And they're claiming that they're actually inside of the Armenian territory. And what it says in in Turkish, the next to Geramamas village, um, uh, and look, they are listing the village area as what they call that province in Azeri, which is constant labeling and claiming Armenian territory. Right. It's not Yerevan, it's Erevan, it's not Sunik, it's uh, what do you call it, Zangezur, which by the way is also an Armenian term. Um, so again, and, and Richard, one the reason why I pulled up the Nikol Pashinyan is the culmination of why sometimes I get a little bit of pushback. This is his page, and I do not see any major statement 
sometimes there's like on the sideline statement, but when something as egregious as thousands of troops, POWs not returned, and now incursions onto your territory, right. that will be nothing but that that the prime minister needs to talk about. Please tell me I'm not crazy. To assume you, that, okay? Greg, you're not crazy. You know, they're the press offices reports here and there are only, I was going to make mention this in a moment. Um, I didn't want to interrupt or anything. They're making, all we're seeing is statements being made that MOD, Armenia will not allow Azerbaijan to do this. We will not allow this. We will not allow this. Pashinyan will say it. The uh, shell of a foreign ministry that we have will say it. The MOD will say stuff, but then I'm, we're not, I'm not, you're not, I don't think either, seeing any kind of concrete action or change to prevent it or stop it or anything. Well, as a matter of fact, so, let's go further. No condemnation. Yeah. I mean, there will be a statement of, but like for a man that likes to be on Facebook directly speaking to the nation, right? My God, can you imagine if like Tijuana entered San Diego? What do you think? Like, I don't know. President Biden wouldn't like come on the telephone, you know, like and be like, hey, there has been an assault on the Armenian American sovereignty, blah, blah, blah. Any nation, any leader of a nation would do that. Yet somehow we're in a territory where I'm like the bearer of bad news. And so are the yeah. two of us, three of us, right? Greg, it does feel like it's happening in a vacuum, man. It makes no sense to me. I agree with you. We're seeing these reports here and there, but then where's well, all the coverage of it where's all the coverage of it there's the, it's like where is the why. outcry where's the outcry right it's like it's like business as usual everywhere else it feels like this it is feels that way. i'm just going to tell you guys right now this is what lobbying buys you this is what lobbying has bought them i well, was at the state capital I, oil, I i fought against the Azeris and Turks having meetings with our senators and representatives at the supper club here across the Sutter club, the Sutter supper club across the street from, from the Capitol. I helped organize a huge rally against these people years ago. Like they have money and they are wielding it. And the fruits of that is what we're seeing now in the media blackout. All that you were talking about, Greg, which is the, if, if, if Armenia does anything, hey, you guys need to chill out. But if they do anything, nobody says anything. That's what they bought. That is exactly what they bought. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's that, guys. And listen, it's that. And like, I really, I mean, uh, I'll tell you one thing to us at Arach Media. Those of you listening, if you think that this, we're a little bit too, too hard in the paint on the failures of the administration, we reserve the right to make sure that we are constantly steadfast and always critical of everything. Tomorrow, if Kocharyan comes, which is not going to happen, we're going to be critical of him. Because if you're not protecting the, the, the country, you're not protecting, you're not serving the nation, you will hear from us and we will educate our audience about right. it. Because and we, we have to hold whoever's in power accountable as well, like absolutely. you said a moment absolutely. ago. Right? Um, Even if, if people are pro Pashinyan, if they voted for him or whatever, you have to hold them accountable. And Greg, just to, uh, Rich, to add to your point, yes, lobbying and so on but i also think even more so it's geopolitics it's oil money and it's nato sadly it's nato all, turkey all, with yeah. NATO. Yeah, yeah for sure yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah. i'm i'm just saying yeah. that that the, the nato part of it and the geopolitics are the things that they use to bolster their point but it's sure. fueled by money in other words Sure, uh, sure. We're gonna we're gonna take a bunch of people out to dinner. We're gonna wine and dine you, and then the, the speaking points that we're gonna make is or are that look, you guys, we're gonna do what we need to do because of this, 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 and this, and this. And the Armenians are the bad players here because of this, 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 and this. And they'll lay it out at dinner, and that that becomes that becomes the Devergor uh, position. Yeah, it, it could be, bro. I, I don't know. I, I I'd like to think that. The representatives know the no. reality. Well, there's a handful that do. Schiff, Menendez, uh, a no, handful. It's but more. The, the problem is again, the way the U.S. is allied, the way Europe no, is no, allied. No, 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 no. The way, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah oh, i mean like oh, guys uh, gentlemen we're jumping yeah. the gun it's going to be explained down the down sure, below. sure 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 yeah, 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 for sure okay. and i'm not debating i'm not debating no, 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 we're not. Not. it's what all saying, related it's all related is this what we're saying all it's related. all related but yes congress and members of congress oftentimes can come out in our in our favor and when they butt up against they mostly butt up against the executive branch and the state department within that executive branch right, right. and the doj which is you know obviously nato's part of part of that so yeah like the 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 reps can be uh, on our side um because we vote for them but the uh the powers that be and this and the actual geostrategic everything about right. this country just does not of does course. not care about armenia's existence of course yeah. of course yeah okay let's give it yeah. all right so the defense minister resigns let's mm -hmm. talk about that briefly. yeah we we touched on it uh we can mention his name uh and what happened um but again yeah as all of this acts of aggressions are happening we noticed this two days ago right guys yeah, um vagar shock harutunian resigned uh greg he wasn't much of a upstanding leader <laughs> right no but no, no. i mean like the guy oversaw a lot of the po post-war i mean <laughs> oh my god i get re-traumatized every time man so already uh what's his name tanoyan who he replaced that man needs to be tried uh, 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 or at least questioned on everything that went on during the 44 days of war. But we're past that, right? We're Because in Armenia, we're chaos to chaos to chaos. So now this guy was literally overseeing all of the madness that was in the post-November 9th <coughs> BS. Right. Did I, was there some, did I hear something? Right. Hear me cough, maybe. Yeah, he coughed. Okay, okay, okay. Was like, like, he was appointed November 20, which is around the same time as the yes. former foreign, foreign minister that resigned, right? Ada Abazian, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and they both said peace out. It does not, like, it, it doesn't look good. It does not look good, right? The optics are not good at all of these high-level ministers are resigning. But I'd like to hear other people's thoughts outside of our yeah. uh, our collective on on what what their thoughts are on that uh, yeah, but because it anyway. could be it could be that they don't want to be in a you know a bad uh situation they don't want to be in a bad cabinet well let's be uh, it could be, be that real. they know things that they don't want to know and they don't want to be culpable for it let's it be real that the previous uh sorry uh, a previous prime minister right i mean foreign minister oof. the previous foreign minister the one that the seat of which is vacant right now he did quote that there there was like a line too far that he doesn't want to cross. Right, right, right. Forget, all his deputies left as well. It wasn't just yep. just the foreign minister. Okay, um, so at some point the diaspora and all the you know people that are uh, constantly telling us to be a little bit less negative need to ask themselves a question: um, If you're just restating the facts about complete failure of government at a time of catastrophe and probably the most pivotal time in our modern armenian nation's history right well then what are you doing aren't you uh you know aren't you covering for something like what's what's the point of not questioning? exactly or right. it's like it's so bad they want no part of it right they gotta go they gotta or, balance. Or let's move on to what uh yeah. something better anyways yeah. yeah so we just had a um a uh a comment uh that Pashinian doesn't care about what the diaspora and uh Amer armenians think of him uh and yeah. and and you may be right kirk that we don't have yeah. a whole lot of influence inside armenia uh to pressure them for change but you know what they sure are willing to accept the diaspora's money mm -hmm. uh, yeah. i'm not, I'm not suggesting that we should have ultimate control uh, you know because we give money but th there there has to be some basic respect and some back and forth because was, many of yeah, us but, i mean honestly yeah. there, there are plenty of things that the three of us could do with our time besides contribute to the development or the awareness of the homeland if i thought about the, the past almost 15 years that we've all been working on uh you know these issues not only here but in the capital and abroad uh that's a lot of man hours and a lot of energy so if 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 armenia isn't isn't grateful for that well that that says more about them than it does us well, well, yeah, that, yeah. well but, but where where i like to always paint with a broad, broader stroke of we're one and the same and right now we're just going through a phase of misunderstanding although the leadership of armenia 30 years on yes i'll criticize all of them 
we're not exactly lockstep with the diaspora no. and, 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 and they, they don't, they don't understand the, the leverage that they have in the international organizations. Okay. Let's move on. Um, and right. neither and shout out, shout out to Kirk. Uh, he's a friend uh, through HBU and the community. Yeah. Just for watching through comments, man. Thank you. Um, so the next thing we have is uh, the POWs. We've got another. Um, yeah, yeah, let's let's so talk about that. And guys, it looks like thank you, Rich, for for that. It looks like it's give minefield maps, get fifteen POWs back. Give minefield maps, get fifteen more POWs. Oh, but by the way, while you're doing that, we're gonna keep trying thirteen POWs at a time and sentencing them to six years in prison. So that's what just happened now. They just sentenced 13 more POWs, which again, you've mentioned it before, Rich, Greg, is illegal according to international law to try POWs against the Geneva Convention or whatever the law is. Out well, there that's why they're calling them terrorists. Exactly, exactly. So exactly, you're well, right. Let, so they call let's, let's remember that about, uh, uh, well, there's gonna be one more news item that's coming up. And let's just remember that about POWs, Geneva Convention, and the classification of who they right, are. Right, right, um, right. So, so just so you guys know, this is a, it was a six-year sentence and six years in prison. They also ruled that upon serving the sentence, POWs will be immediately returned or extradited to Armenia. Oh, great. Go serve six years, then we'll release you. Okay. By the way, earlier this month, 14 other POWs, which we, which we reported, were sentenced to serve four years to six months in prison. The harshest sentence so far was handed uh, to the Lebanese Armenian Vikan, uh, Ulujikjan, who was given a 20 year sentence. So there you go. Uh, our POWs need to come home immediately and some are being sentenced and, and put in prison. There you go. Go ahead guys, sorry, didn't mean to keep it going. Um, so the other thing that we've got is, um the to wrap up the i guess to wrap up the election coverage right which would be um yeah real quick the constitutional court upheld the election results electing uh nico pashinian and his party uh once again re-electing him um so that in a nutshell is what happened we were, we talked about it ever since the election how the opposition parties, uh, four of them had come together with um, certain cases against the election, um, but those have been overturned. The election has been upheld. And at the same time, Robert Kocharian, who was head, who was set, slated to be the head of the opposition party, the main opposition party, Haistan Dashni, Greg, Greg and Rich, uh, right. yeah, uh, what has turned down or sorry he will not accept his parliamentary mandate he will not accept his seat in the parliament he's allowing other leaders to step in i think that makes sense i remember we, we talked about that during the election would he really take a seat if if uh as a minority in the parliament um well, and i don't know i mean there's part of me that says if you you know, it shouldn't matter whether you're a minority or majority, you want to serve the nation. But you know, what do I know? I'm not in it. Well, well, look, man, we think, think about it. That would be like a former president now becoming a member of the House of Representatives. It like, wouldn't be, it wouldn't, yeah, but yeah. it wouldn't, so what? Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. be the first time, dude. It wouldn't be the first time. But it's okay. I mean, you know, uh, um, you know we're, we're new to nation building. We're an old nation, but actually nation building, we're still, we're still working that out. And it's okay. His, uh, the opposition is going to be there. There's going to be a pushback right. to, to, the, to, to Pashinyan's mandate. Um, unfortunately, he is in the majority. Um, yes, to those that love him, I do say, unfortunately, because of the way that he's handling everything. Question me and I'll come back to you. Let's keep going. Yeah. So, so and uh, with that, while we're touching on parliament, thank you, Rich. The We were wondering when the new parliament takes effect. It's August 2nd. That is when the new parliament will convene. I don't, I, I believe they're still trying to sort out who the ministers are going to be, who all the parliament uh, members of parliament are going to be, are going to be, but it's it's August second. So we have a, we have a couple of small news items before we move on to uh, Europe and uh, and the big stuff. And we we you you briefly touched on this, Greg. And I, can you spend like two minutes to dive into like what this means? Because oh, yeah. you know, Azerbaijan has been making all these territorial claims. And if we follow that logically, then that would also mean that Armenia or Armenians have territorial claims 
in the opposite direction because we have held those lands as well. So maybe you can help us unpack this. Yeah, well, so, you know, the very, uh, you know, the, with everything that's happening and everything that's going in Azerbaijan's favor, by and large, of the, you know, proximity of the total collapse of a lot of things in Armenia and the border patrol and all of that, right? The one thing that people are astounded, and actually I've heard many, many folks that are analyzing the situation is how um you know uh, unchecked aliyev is where in reality he should be praying to god that you know this keeps continues the way that it goes and he should not anger the situation any further but he keeps making lavish claims to that there used to be azeri settlements uh in and around sevan and yerevan and this and this and this and that and thus it, he, he he has a claim for Erevan, which is his name for uh, the capital of armenia yerevan uh, there's a name for lake sevan in in, in Azeri that he keeps mentioning, right? Um, in that same logic, right? If that is the precedent, right? That's how you claim it. Under the same exact uh, rules of uh, thought, Armenia has the right to claim Baku, where uh, Baku was built by Armenians. Uh, look it up. Um, and uh, what do you call it? No, no I'm just saying uh, no time. Yeah. Um, and then and then what do you call it? And Nachichevan, which bears an Armenian name, Nachichevan. I don't I don't care how many X's they put in the name or uh, whatever the hell they want to do. Uh, but Nachichevan literally is an Armenian uh, two words combined together. So um, yeah, that was the ministry's kind of clap back, if you want to say that. Anyways, I'm done with this topic. Let's move yeah, on. Yeah, I thought it was a smart clap back. We have many more of yeah. that. Um, and then the other small news item was that, well, it's not even small, but it's worth at least mentioning, uh, is that, um, that Armenia is one of 10 countries that was targeted by, spy, by a spyware firm with ties to the Israeli government. Um, obviously, we, don't, we, 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 we know this is nothing new in terms of, you know, um, uh, the cyber warfare, but it just goes to show that there are, you know, people who are, who ethically and morally should be on our side who are are their own independent actors trying to make their own way um and so you know the, the, there is besides the holocaust there is nothing at all that aligns armenia with israel and this is coming through in the war this is coming through in its cooperation with azerbaijan and this is coming through in everything my only question is what in the hell were they spying on i think israel doesn't really need anything for armenians from Armenians, I think they were spying on behalf of somebody. Just like Rich, me and you, when we were yeah. advocating for the Armenian genocide, we were not coming up, and this is Greg coming full unleashed. I don't care who, who records and listens to me. When we were always advocating for the recognition of the Armenian genocide, we would not come up flush up against Turks or Azeris. What we would come up against is a lot of, lot of very heavy handed, uh, what do you call it, Jewish lobby groups. There you have it. Um, I, I know it. David knows well, look, it. guys, we know that the, the, the Turks bought Israeli drones, right? Mm -hmm. Israeli made drones and then used them to kill Armenians in Artsakh. Mm -hmm. So we know that. Uh, yeah. So. Do it, yeah. The kamikaze drones, as they all, 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 all amazingly are called. Kamikaze being, of course, yeah. the yeah. Japanese you know, maneuver of uh, self detonating and uh, just, just destroying themselves. And, you know, what I think is interesting about this news item, and then we can move on, guys, is that the spyware also hacked well, it, 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 it hacked a bunch of things right but uh it tracked illegally hacking surveillance um uh, it okay hold on a second sorry guys hold on I, I found a really good thing okay the countries targeted included armenia palestine israel it's an israeli company targeting israel i think that's kind of weird uh, there's a lot of arabs living in israel there you go. Okay. That's true. That's There's true. Armenians living in Israel. Maybe there true. are. Maybe That's they true. were spying on Armenians in Armenia, uh, Palestine, and Israel. True. I don't know. I don't but know. then Iran, Lebanon, Yemen, Spain, the UK, Turkey, and Singapore. So if Turkey or Azerbaijan is hiring these guys to do stuff, they're still spying on them too. It's just kind of weird. America right? spies on its own people. I don't think this is a linear thing. Uh, so yeah, whatever. Yeah. Israel I, is definitely uh, getting into the just. Thought it was very interesting. Yeah. So now we're moving, uh, you know, from from the hot zone of Armenia uh, and Azerbaijan to uh, to Israel and moving closer to Europe. And what we just found out is that the European Court has mm -hmm. issued a verdict against Azerbaijan. 
Yes. Um, um, so let's talk about that first. Yeah, this is an Encino case, right? It's from a while back, right? But the verdict happened. I think like, this is from 2009. So what happened in the Tavos region in the town of Bert, A person, a man, and his friends went uh, mushroom picking. Okay, you would think you can do that on your own territory. And again, if this was not a preamble to what's to come in the future. Um, again, I'm always speaking to the crowd that wants to normalize ties with Azerbaijan. Always. that You are my audience, people. Um, the, this man was on the Armenian territory, but uh, uh, close to the border in the village of Baird. And he was uh, captured by Azeri special forces because they're always hitting around the forested areas, um, taken to Azerbaijan, detained, and horribly treated in, in, in the detention. Um, he suffered you know, aside from physical abuse, PTSD of all sorts, anxiety uh, and depression for years to come. And his case was taken up to the European Court of whatever, I don't know, human rights, I'm assuming. And uh, today uh, there was a verdict that was handed over, I think 10 years. This is also another thing I don't like. Courts move so slow here in America too. This is 10 years after it was filed um and uh what 12 13 12 years after the incident or 13 years um yeah and greg to your point it was it was the european court of human rights mm -hmm. and they have, have obligated azerbaijan to pay badalian thirty thousand euros in non percussion how do you say this pecuniary damage did we lose rich Thirty thousand. that's it 30,000 euros, what is that, about 60 some odd thousand dollars? Yeah. I don't know. Listen, I want to read this real quick. He was often beaten on his legs so that he could not feel or move them. Electric wires were frequently attached to his fingers, and the power switched on, causing severe pains. His cell door was hit with metallic objects, and as a result of which, then he now suffers a hearing disorder. Now, tell me that that's only worth $60,000. So, that's no, no, it's that. way less, that's way less, that. guys. Excuse me. Also, it's, not just that, guys. Also, not just that. I know, David, it's way less than $60,000. $35,308.95 US. But That's you don't need to quantify that. Um, you can use that as, an, as a precedent. Legal. It's a legal win. Okay? So let's, let's celebrate something. Yes, yes. As a way to showcase that Azerbaijan is incapable of housing any Armenian POWs, captives, detainees, yeah, right. anything. Okay? Yeah, you're right. So right. uh, the monetary value, I don't like, I don't think they can. Well, right. I mean, look, you're right, Greg. It is a, it is, it is important that, and, and a positive thing that. Um, that all uh, right. Moving, this, moving this forward. Ruling, this ruling. All right. All right. Which one do you want to go to? All right. What we got? Um, so uh, the next one is uh, uh, thoughts on, uh, thoughts of our, uh, our Mamparian. Let me see one sec. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is this is a little bit of a, 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 a you know setting up, right? So uh, the next section is going to go into the essentially what's happening. I'm calling it like a season that's opening up right now of essentially this rehashing of what is the American Armenian relations, right? So we had the we had you know David so succinctly last time explained and Richard uh, also that we have the. The, the, the fanfare and the jubilation of the recognition of the Armenian genocide and then defeat, 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 defeat from everything from the executive branch to the State Department, which is part of it, going down to the, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, remind me of the section that uh, the article that 907, was, section 907, section 907 that was uh, allowing the, the sales of, uh, of arms to the other waiver, not, exactly waiver, the waiver that was, you know, instituted after the September 11th attack and the war on terror that is just like a menace on the entire right. it's world. It's been right waived. Now. It's been waived by every administration since 9-11. Yeah, exactly. Yes. As a way to give uh, uh, aid to Azerbaijan that needs to then murder Armenians. Um, military so, aid. Giving yeah. military aid. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, there's, a, there's a quick article in, I believe it was in the... the um, and, and by the way, Greg, don't forget, add one more thing. Don't forget don't the forget. appointment of uh, Jeff Flake. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, you Turkish know, the, ambassador, yeah. The levels yeah. of nightmare. So here we go. Uh, the idea of this section of the conversation will be Armenian-American relations, right? And this is a this is an article. This is a kind of an op-ed from uh, Aram Hamparian from May twenty uh, May twenty eight two thousand twenty one, where he kind of clearly succinctly explains how for one hundred and six years, minus this today, this one year now, that the United States has been working hard on denying the truth about the Armenian genocide. 
on constantly advocating for entities, the State Department and the executive branch, always advocating for things that are against the small landlocked nation of Armenia, um, constantly bringing anti-Armenian, this is my favorite guy right there, the honest broker as the representative of Matthew Braza. Yours truly has been in a room with Matthew Braza. This guy is, was, is an American, like what you want to call him, a uh, seasoned dip diplomat, someone that's always, uh, what do you call it, you know, in the diplomatic corps. And this guy's rhetoric against Armenia. And he's he was representing at one point, our Amer he was the American chair of the OSCE Minsk group, okay? Um, and then he just kind of um, keeps going down to this, this new, uh, this actually like a 20 year old idea that's being rehashed now of something called TARC, which is the Turkish Armenian Reconciliation Commission. Again, this is this uh, idea that Armenians and Turks need to live in peace and blah, 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 blah. And the only way that I can explain this is when you tell a rape victim that you got to be okay with the rapist. That's the only, that's the clearest way to all of the American Armenians watching us and then listening to us later. Now, I know a lot of the Turkish Armenians and Armenians in Yerevan now that are about the opening of borders need to understand that what you're suggesting is complete capitulation of your national self-interest when you're not asking for anything from the others in advance. It's just uh, how it's going to be reconciled, we don't know, okay? Um, that's, so that was the op-ed. Let's move on. Right. Yeah, it's, 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 very, it's very powerful. We'll talk about TARC more in just a moment, right? The op-ed op is very powerful, uh, it's, and it's, it's brief. And we'll link it, and you should be so, should, should, yeah, it's very brief and it's in pointed like phrases here, here, very here. pointed, very, very pointed. You know, thank so, you, Mr. Hamparin. Yeah. We we like to be pretty balanced when it comes to our output of in, in information. Um, and so we've shared something from the ANCA, which is one political advocacy group. The other political advocacy group uh is the Armenia Assembly, and they have um, they're, they're about to host a past and present American ambassadors uh, discussion. Um, it was actually this morning. It, it, it was this morning, yes. It was this morning. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, in retrospect, I would love to have heard that, but unfortunately, yeah. all of us, you know, we're, we got, you know, <laughs> jobs to attend on top of yeah, everything. Yeah, me too, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, um, reg I registered for it in hopes that they'll have a recording that they'll send. Yeah, it yeah. was at 7 a.m. this morning, our time, 10 a.m. Eastern. I thought that was interesting. Uh, Lynn Tracy is not the current ambassador was on that. I would have liked to hear what she had to say, uh, but she has been beyond uh, horrible um, as an advocate for the Armenian people. That's for sure. Sorry, Greg, right. to cut you off, man. No, no, it's okay. I'm yeah. actually having a little bit of a of connectivity issue. So if I cut out, you guys just take over. I don't know what's going on, but it's, you know, just technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, no, I'm, I appreciate Armenian Assembly, uh, uh, and I'll be very, you know, forthcoming in saying that bringing to a panel like this, I would add, you know, gander the question of why uh, I'm former, if this was a panel of former ambassadors, right, why former, uh, the darling of Armenians, former Ambassador Evans wasn't on this panel, because I think he, yeah. he he cuts through a lot of the BS, but, and also I, Yovana. I yeah, huh? I think you know why, Greg. Yeah, yeah, and 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 also the yeah. ambassador Yovanovitch. However, in some cases she can be problematic, but still, you know, has a lot of insight that she could have brought to this conversation. Um, so Let, let's just tell everybody real quick, John Evans, mm -hmm. former ambassador, U.S. ambassador to Armenia, actually recognized the Armenian genocide, called it the called it a genocide, and was fired uh, shortly after. He called as the ambassador of yes again. So exactly, I've met the man. Great guy. I was so glad I got to tell him thank you for doing that. Uh, he's pretty much retired now. He's doing good. He's not, he's, he's doing just fine. Uh, and he's very much uh, a friend of the assembly. He's at, he's been at every assembly banquet I've been to in DC. Um, but my guess is he wasn't on that panel because of the politics of it. Absolutely. Uh, but, but go well, ahead, Greg. We, we can actually ask our friends at the assembly of which we have many. Um, and lastly, um, again, going back to, uh, Tark, the moderator, uh, Mr. Von Krikorian, that was uh, moderating this is none other than a person that was very much in, that, in, in favor of Tark back in the day. And again, a lot of times things happen and the diaspora just sleeps on things. That's why we're here to explain it. Again, Tark, mm -hmm. the, what do you call it? The Turkish Armenian Reconciliation 
commission or committee. Um, why was it ever a thing? And why does it need to ever be a thing? And there were leaked cables now that we know that the United States State Department was actually funding that research and wanting it, like giving it a, a slow nudge for this to happen. Because there are forces within the State Department that would like to see Armenia in cahoots with Turkey. But again, I would like to say it to the world. We're not Georgia. Georgia never had a genocide with, with, with Turkey, right? We're not Iran. We're not Azerbaijan. We're Armenia. We're a genocided nation that's being asked to play nice with the genocide perpetrator. I'm asking Armenians within that nation of ours mm. to question their desires to do so. Right, right. And I don't care if you grew up in Istanbul. I grew up in Tiflis. I have a lot of criticisms for Georgia. Let's think rationally. Let's yeah, think look, look back at the, the Artsakh War, 2020 war. They're blocking airspace, blocking the border, blocking uh, aid from humanitarian mm -hmm. aid from coming through the border of Georgia. That's not a that's not a good actor. It's not an ally. So so and the reason uh, why I keep bringing up Tark is that there's there's reason to believe that that same committee or commission, whatever. Sorry, I need to brush up on that. Is most likely going to be kind of revitalized again. Part of the framework of what's happening with Pashinyan and the desire to move on and move forth and yada yada yada. Richard. Yeah. Well, there's two things I'd say. Uh, the the main thing being. Uh, well, really, the only thing to say. Uh, I don't necessarily oppose a reconciliation, but not without atonement, not without exactly. some form of acknowledgement, not without and some gen you you on a personal level. If you have a problem with one of your friends, if you guys, if if let's say, okay, I'll put this in real world world terms. A friend of mine and I, we had a falling out. Uh, he called me up one day and was just like, hey, man, I don't know what happened. I'm really sorry, but I, I miss you. Let's what do we need to do to squash this? I'm willing to do whatever it takes. 15 minutes later, I was on the phone with him and we worked it out because of a misunderstanding. Obviously, this is a much bigger deal. But my but the point is the same, which is you can't keep abusing someone and expect them to come to the table. You can't keep attacking someone and expect right. them to try and reconcile. You, right. you have to atone for what you've done. So Turkey has to atone. Azerbaijan has to atone. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't even want to call them Azeris anymore. They're Turks. Let's just call it who they are. Right. Like, why are we, why are we, why are we screwing around with the semantics around this? Okay. We have two bad actors who are deliberately trying to mess with us, who are, who are attacking our villagers who are taking territory and then telling the international community that we're the ones that need to work it out. That's horseshit. But I have to, unfortunately, and, and this would not be possible if the nation was kind of like a wall against it. There are bad actors within Armenia's yeah. nation well, we that, are really, that are really, really interested in this. And I Sorry really, for the language, but I'm what I'm saying up about it. Here's what I'd like to say. We are here in Arash Media where, you know, we're a democratic organization. I would like to see uh, organize of that movement come and talk to us. Sure, um, sure, and sure. I would like to hear what they say, because I don't see right. uh, a, a reason to move forward with a nation that murdered 1.5 million. Well, of and you. still wants us dead. It still wants to take. And is still, still actively killing. promoting the same rhetoric. Exactly. Is still and still saying actively things. killing Armenians. Still actively killing Armenians. Look. You cannot have any kind of reconciliation without peace, without, without atonement, without atonement, and without peace. Unless that's I'm the sorry, same. Sorry, I'm going to add without reparations. We can't just like assume. There you that's go. Right. There you, move, go. There you know, go. live free and move on. Okay, because there, there, there are go. still lands. My wine company is called Karin for not for no reason because the the city of Karin has zero trace of my ancestry. Right. 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 So You're you right. know. And uh, and Greg speaking about wine, and again, not to go on a tangent at all, but it's directly related. There's friends of yours and ours, friends of the show, guests that we've had that have lost their winery in Artsakh now. Right. So it, 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 it happening now. Right. It's happening now. This isn't about right. Air's room and Gars only. This is about now too. So it's still happening. Is the point? And, yeah. and and Greg, you know, this is another point that you and I have a connection about. Like your family has as a wine business right now. My grandmother, my great grandparents had a winery. Like, like some people said this a hundred years ago, it's forever ago. No, 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 no. 
My grandmother survived it. My grandfather survived it. I watched my grandmother cry every day. Like, this is not old news to me. This is, I have a living memory of this. So, Gentlemen, you know, maybe I wasn't there, but I was, I bore witness to the person who was there. So don't tell me it didn't happen. Richard, don't they're all just didn't... waiting. They're all just waiting for just one more generation to pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yes. For sure. Okay. For sure. Um, and then okay. there'll be like already the, the degree of separation and the what, and there'll be already a lot of, there's already this whole, like, let's move on. You know, the move on committee is already full force. A hundred percent. It's true. It's true. The war is and done we, and they feel like everything's the good. Bad actors. We are the bad actors. We're the right. ones that are not allowing this to pass. Right. 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 So the, let's, the, let's the war talk is about done. The war is done. we got to move on guys. Real quick note. Van Krikorian is co-chair of the Armenian assembly. Mm. Um, you know, perhaps it's something we can talk to him about. That's That'd be so nice. Perhaps something I'm, we can talk I'm, to him I'm about. I'm curious uh, about know. Tark. Thoughts on Tark now. I'd be curious to know, like you're probably maybe what you were getting at, Greg. I'd be curious to know what the stance is right now. I'd be well, curious to know. I'd be, wait, 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 wait. I'd be curious to know why we need a reconciliatory. I'm going basic, guys. Why we need a reconciliatory committee when there's no? I think the reconciliatory committee is this it's yet another gotcha moment. And just the Armenians that feel like they need to move on just don't have the processing power to understand. And the gotcha moment is, I'm gonna get you into a dialogue and we're gonna continue this charade. For sure. And what For we're sure. talking, 100%. Is, we're gonna open up the borders. We're gonna take over your economy. We're gonna do everything that, that is gonna, what do you call it? Uh, make you dependent on us. And then when it's nothing is left, you got Azerbaijan murdering us, you got Turkey completely bought our entire economy. Well, then sign, sealed, delivered, goodbye. Go vacation on an island in Istanbul. Okay. So, right. so, so we had a we had a comment and it, it dovetails exactly into what we're talking about here. And regardless of my time with one of the political organizations, I'll just leave it at that. Um, I will say that I, I really wish I would have been able to connect with William a couple of weeks ago uh, to sort of, you know, uh, just yeah. work out what we wanted to. Um, the, 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 the question from Ara here is, why is it the ANC unequivocally works, unequivocally works for the Armenian interest? But we can't say the same about the Armenian Assembly. And why does the Armenian Assembly push hard? Why are our own Armenian groups uh, ones we need to worry about backstabbing. So oh, look, guys, I don't know. Look, let's not answer this question. Yeah, but, look, um, I, I think I, that's that's a little bit much. We can, they, you could go to the Armenian Assembly side. You could look at the policy agenda. Tark right. is not there. If Tark is happening in the background, if it's going to come up, we'll see. Uh, I could. We we are very close with them and ANCA. We for sure. Find this out, but like, I'm not seeing that on the radar. If it is behind the scenes, it could be. But Look, that, I'm not, that, that sounds a little harsh to me. I'm not I'm not on one side of the fence or the other on that one, but it, it was a comment that came up and it's worth discussing. And what we did say in the beginning of this episode was that we're willing to push back on whatever is not true. And I don't know what the truth is. They may not have it as part of their agenda, but they may be pushing it. So the question is why? So, so to Greg's so, point uh, about Tark, why? I mean, yeah, I understand. Let's wrap this. And this is not a, you know, like a, a year bad or year. I don't want to bash bad. anybody, but it's, I mean, this is this is stuff that is coming up, not not just in our circle. Okay, let's so? let, let, let me um and guys, let me know if you can hear me. Am I speaking well? Um, and yeah. we can wrap it up. The last piece is this, right? There's a lot of cables that we uh, so we these things don't happen in a vacuum. There has always been a policy in the Armenian politics, in the Armenian government's politics, for with the first president of the country, Levonter Petrosan, and his foreign minister, Jirai Libaritan, the architect of the, of the protocols and how to kind of move past the uh, uh, Artsakh, uh, uh, what do you call it, issue. And you know, sometimes we bring the news and sometimes we need to discuss things that are, uh, you know, f from the past so that you understand that things don't happen in a vacuum. Things are actually a continuation of bad policies from the past. And uh, Ter Petrosan and Liparitan were always under the idea that there is this sense that Armenia can never survive if it doesn't do well within the Turkic realm, okay? If it does not actually open up and uh, uh, come into not the, 
I, you know, not under the wing of Turkey, but it has to be on good terms with Turkey or life is going to be no bueno. Okay, moving forward. But currently, with this onset of policies that we're seeing about the integration of economy, it's all yada, 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 in light of attacks on the Armenians and attacks on everything, it's the continuation of that seeded notion. You locked up. Oh, we lost. You, you froze. There you are, Greg. You froze for a second. Sorry. The, what do you call it? It's the continuation of the idea of the Ter Petrosan era. And I can, you know, we can go into this. There's lots of documents, actual statements that we need to somehow be okay with being integrated into the Turkic world. Otherwise, Armenia can't survive. I do not agree with that. Um, but that is the statement of the first president of Armenia. And Jirai Libaridan being the architect of that idea, and as well as the idea of how to settle the Artsakh uh, conflict, which, by the way, now in retrospect, like we can't even talk about it, but it was so egregious for those days that now, uh, like what happened today is 10 times worse than the already egregious uh, architecture of Jirai Libaridan settlement of the Artsakh conflict. But by the way, the five kilometer, what do you call it? The, 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 the corridor between Armenia and Artsakh, that was his idea. That was kind of their framework. And again, Aram Hampanyan today mentioned that the cables that were released at the State Department, declassified ones, showed how the State Department was definitely pushing that agenda, that essentially, essentially outlining, well, this is, yeah, this is called the problem with TARC, but the next Facebook tab right there, and the one that's over, yeah. next over, yeah. This, these are declassified. I, I really, really, uh, uh, yeah, what do you call it? Uh, the, the US Department of State, uh, essentially these cables on the settlement of the Artsakh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Artsakh, uh, uh, um, the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, the Artsakh conflict, really is telling how America wants to see this move forward and how lockstep they are with, with a very, very uh, uh, horrendous uh, uh, plan of Girard Libaritan. Again, folks, we're here to inform. You can see everything that we said. You can Google and research yourself. Who is Yirali Baritan? Levonter uh, Petrosian's, uh, uh, what do you call it? Ideas of the settlement of the Artsakh conflict um, and what his, his, his thoughts are and all the dark times that came in and in between those uh, uh, on the cusps of those uh, ideas being formulated. Okay, David, you're silent. No, no, I'm, I'm listening, man. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Sometimes yeah. I get a little bit of, you know, but there, are, but we just can't always talk in vacuums. Things are not just popping up. They're popping up because planted seeds have happened. And I don't know if it's one and the same. They've denounced each other, but Nicole Pashinyan's political career did start in Levante Petrosian's camp. So, Apple, yeah. tree, tree, apple, chicken, egg, whatever the American statements are, I don't know. But uh, we're here to ask those questions. Um, yeah, and I just want to make something clear uh, in, in, in reading that quote and, um, you know, posing a question about the Armenian Assembly. I, 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 I have had no bad dealings with anybody with the Armenian Assembly, and I've had nothing but good ones. I've, and I'm not trying to call them out specifically, but I am putting voice to what you know, a comment that was made. So yeah, uh, no, no, Rich. This I is don't want anybody to think that I'm bashing anybody because that's, no, not, no, but that's just, not my intention. No, no, sure. you know, but but questions can be asked. And uh, David and I have lots of good friends at the Armenian Assembly, and we want to continue the dialogue. But you know, you know, at at some point, even I'm going to start to ask questions, and that is my right to do so. And we have friends, yeah. in, uh, and we have friends in the assembly, I, and I would love to do it actually directly as well. N lastly, lastly, um, let's with the finishing up of the American-Armenian, uh, what do you call it, uh, relations, which is kind of the theme of today. Um, Bob, Robert Menendez, there was a Senate hearing during which Robert Menendez pointedly asked, hey, um, and I hope the sound is on, Rich, I think it is on, right? Um, let's, let's play the clip. This is where Robert Menendez is, yeah. Let me make yes. sure. Sen Senator from New Jersey. Senator from New Jersey. Senator from New Jersey. A dear and friend a constant of ally. A yeah. constant ally. And I'm really yeah. grateful for that. All right. Here we go. Are you familiar with Turkey facilitating the transfer of fighters from Syria to Azerbaijan during the 2020 war in Nagorno-Karabakh? 
Um, I think it would be appropriate on that last point to discuss it in a separate session, if that's uh, acceptable to you, Mr. Chairman, in another setting. All right. Well, as part of that, I will be looking forward to hearing from the department whether you investigated any of the Turkish drones used by Azerbaijan in the war last summer that included U.S. produced component parts, which I find totally unacceptable. Are you familiar with Turkey? Good for him. Uh, thank you, Senator Menendez. Absolutely. And actually, I wonder, I, I wonder what would have happened if he said, no, that is not acceptable to me, uh, Madam, well, whatever her name was. We know what would have happened. She would have pled the fifth and said, this is classified information. I would like us to talk behind closed doors, which the guys in suits come in and explain to Mr. Senator, hey, dude, you're messing with America's foreign policy right now. Does Little Armenians need to shh and go away. That's right. Yeah, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say again, um, the one Christian democracy in the area. America doesn't care about that. Dude. I know. No, 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 no. Rich brings up a good point. In D.C., that is always on that ANC <laughs> assembly. That's always there. Hey, advocate, advocate the democracy there. The democracy there. The democratic ties, democratic values, constantly, constantly, and then and the representatives say it too. Representative yes. say it too. They yes. make comments about it. Yes, the are the doc the democracy. They're a beacon, the jewel, the democracy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they say that stuff, Greg. Right? They do, but in the end, they're not there doing we much for them because of right? Turkey. We, because we of are, Turkey, we are very much okay with Saudi Arabia, which is a authoritarian state. We side with Azerbaijan over Armenia, which has been a clan, and we also, by the way, I'm. Right. I'm well, what do both of those nations have? Oil, oil. and money. Oil, oil, and oil. 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 Oh, and Real also some, some, some strategic fetishizing love affair with America. Um, America with them. But also, um, uh, there's something, you know, non Armenian related that we can kind of take a gander. All of us being American Armenians, we lived through the Afghan, Afghan war, which literally clap, clap, clap has come to an end. Americans have withdrawn. And within weeks, we're seeing the collapse of Afghanistan and the reemergence of Taliban and why the Taliban has been reemerging. Re None other than Pakistan has been harboring them in the, what do you call it, adjoining territories on the border of Afghanistan. And what is Pakistan? Yet another strategic partner of America, where next to their Pentagon, uh, we found none other than Osama bin Laden. Okay, so I really, really am very perplexed by America's, uh, you know, thoughts of the future and being constantly, yeah. uh, you know, uh, tugged around by special interests that have no interest in our America's future as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would like to finish on that. That is me. All right. So, so before we send everybody on their way, we, we typically blow past this and put the links up. I want two minutes just to let everybody know that there is a way to put pressure on our representatives. We are talking about all sorts of news items that are important. Uh, important enough for you to pay attention to us while we're putting it out there. Important enough for you to click on it and watch this discussion an hour and 20 minutes after we start, an hour and 15 minutes after we start. So uh, I would imagine that you wanna do something about it rather than just watch. And the way you can do that is to, first of all, uh, I'm gonna share a couple screens and I'll just talk about it for the next 90 seconds, all right? Uh, first one is, from the ANCA, and, uh, and this is about this is about putting pressure uh, on Congress to block military aid to Azerbaijan. Um, this is how you can do it. You simply fill this out and uh, send it on its way, and you'll be able to put a little bit of pressure. I would urge you to make phone calls, but you can also uh, you know do this through uh, you know so, you know through the internet. Uh, you can also put pressure to urge our senators to, to support the demining in Artsakh. Uh, there's, this is a great way of, of really interacting with our levers of government. Um, so the next one is uh, HRES 240, uh, which is POWs. The POWs. Um, we've got something from the, AN, uh, the Armenian Assembly and the ANCA, and we're going to have those up here as well. Which, uh, by the way, that is up to 60 co-sponsors. There you go. It's inching, inching its way. That's five more than the last time I checked. It's now at 60. So 
Right. But there's 345, 335 members, 345 members, 335, right? 435, excuse me, 435 members of Congress, only 60 have signed on to what should be an absolute humanitarian international emergency, human rights emergency. There Absolutely. you go. All right. Um, and then we, we, we've made mention of, of um, the, the uh, section 907, and this is basically, this is, how do I, how do I phrase this for everybody? These two I'm going to put up in the links, um, but this is this is about holding Azerbaijan's feet to the fire uh, and making sure that we don't uh, keep funding their efforts against us. Um, so please fill out the, the the last two from ANCA and from the Armenian Assembly because uh, it's really important. If that is, of course, if you if you don't want your tax dollars to go to hurting Armenians and, and Armenia. So um, that's my little spiel. Uh, all of these links will be up not only on this on this uh, feed, but it'll also be on our link tree, which I'll put up as well. Um, you guys you, have uh, anything about uh, upcoming episodes? Uh, We're good. Let's uh, let's just uh, you know stay tuned. Uh, yeah. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for your support. Share share the page. Invite your friends. Everyone that's watching, it's on Facebook. You can invite your friends directly to like and follow. Arach Media. Uh, we're looking to really grow the following, reach more people, inform more people, right. and uh, get information out there. So, all right, we have uh, some some cool guests that we're working on. So, stay tuned about uh, you know, some upcoming episodes. Um, I would like to think that we could pivot to more cultural and artistic, creative things. Uh, sadly, the news will probably still be consumed by. More aggression, but we, you with, if you can help by calling your representatives, we may be able to avert some of this crisis. So, um, anyway, there you have it. So, all right, yeah, well, said, well said. All right, thank you, guys. Next Thursday, nine p.m. Pacific time. Yeah. Good night, Good night everybody. Good night. All right, David. Take Why am I? It's, we're still alive. We're still alive. We're still alive. We're still alive. What's up, guys? I don't know what the heck happened here. Uh, it's okay. We could just, worst case, we can end the meeting. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for watching. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye.